Hello friends, welcome to Shikshati. In this video, we shall be discussing binary logic. So let's start. Now when we are discussing binary logic, in the very first place we need to understand that what is the meaning of binary logic. So when there is a logic made to something and here something would be a statement that is being made. You know, a statement that is being made by an individual has binary outcomes. Now when I say binary that means it has two outcomes. Now when I say two outcomes that means either the statement will be correct or it will be incorrect. So when we are talking about binary logic then we are basically talking about let's say a statement that is made a statement and then this has two outcomes either the statement is correct or the statement is incorrect. This is what we mean by binary logic. Now the second point, so this is the first point that I was discussing with you. So, so let's say a statement or an event or an happening in life. So the best way here is to understand that there is an event that is happening. The event could be in the form of a statement. The event could be in the form of an happening, could be a natural happening, could be an unnatural happening, whatever, you know, said or done. So when we talk about an event, the happening of an event, the outcome may be what either the event, I mean, whatever the statement has been made is correct or it is incorrect. This is, this is the meaning of binary. So binary means two when the outcomes are two and those two outcomes which are mutually exclusive. Why do we say they are mutually exclusive to each other? Because the correct statement has no intersection with the incorrect statement. They're, in a certain sense, they are antonyms to each other. Now, the second thing which is important here is, so what is being done? So when we are talking about all of these, whether it was a statement or it was an event or it was a happening, here we are talking about what, what and then we are talking about who, who is doing what, I mean who is making that statement and for, for further discussions, I will be sticking on to statements only. So who is making a statement that is equally important. Now in life you need to understand that you will come across various personalities and if I were to uh, discuss the meaning of the word personality, the outcome of a personality in terms of a correct response or a non-correct response, I will be as precise as possible because this will take me hours to discuss about how complex a personality can be. So we will try and make it quite objective in nature. So when we are talking about the who part of it, that means we are basically referring to an entity, a personality who is making this statement. Let's call this as entity or we label it as a personality or any other thing that falls under this ambit. Now when we are talking about who, this who can be divided into four parts. So broadly you will see that you will come across four different types of personalities in life. Now what are these four types of personalities? One would be truth tellers. The other would be liars by definition. Third would be alternators. Let's say alternator of one variety which is A1 and the last here would be alternators of another variety. And as of now we are talking about a systematic approach. We are talking about an ordered approach. So now here we are talking about ordered sets. There is a particular order. So this is the first type of who. So let's put it as we were discussing A. B part here is unordered, unsystematic. So here unordered here means basically we are referring to unsystematic approach. And here by order we are meaning I mean, what do we intend to convey here is systematic. Now, what do I mean by these two is because these are two very important things because seldom I have come across this, I mean, any theory on this topic. But as a student, when I am writing various exams, 
and when I prepared for a particular exam for the very first time, I made a theory of my own which gives me a better understanding of this topic and it does not only give me a better understanding of the topic but at the same time it makes me profess that topic equally well. So it is only when you understand the topic then only you can profess it. I mean you can use it for your betterment or for anybody for that matter of fact. Okay, so now when we are talking about truth tellers, I mean maybe I'll explain this thing to you with the help of an example. So let us say there are few statements made by people. Oh, let me put it as okay. So let's say there are statements in life either we make I mean we'll be making various there is a difference between the sentence and a statement I hope you know this if you do not please watch a video which talks about it's a video of mine only which talks about what is the difference between a, a statement and a sentence please try and understand the difference between a statement and a sentence okay now if I were to make it more categoric in nature Statements could be, you know, either I talk about affirmative sentences or negative sentences. Affirmative in a certain way is positive sentence, wherein, for example, if I'm using a positive sentence, if I have to introduce myself, um, I'll say I am Anant. Or if I talk about my profession, I can say, okay, let's say if I want to talk about my background, I can say I am an engineer. Or if I want to, you know, go further, I can say I am an MBA from a premier business school. So this is a statement. Now why do I call it as a statement? Because a statement can be answered only in terms of yes or no, which is what we talked about. So a statement will always have a very categoric response. You'll say yes to it or you'll say no to it, which is incorrect. Yes, this is correct. No, this is not correct, which means it is incorrect. You will never ever encounter a situation like maybe it is correct, maybe it is incorrect. That can never fall under the category of a statement. Okay, so coming back, let us say various statements are made. So I am talking about one statement, two statements, three statements, four statements and so on. Five, six and so on. And if I have to draw a chart here and capture the response of these you know a type of whose what would be the response now the response here is how do you react to a situation is a response and here we are talking about a systematic response now systematic response means we are basically talking about an ordered pair so so let's say we are referring to a part of it and then we are first talking about truth tellers which is i'll put it as t then liars, alternator of first variety and alternators of second variety. So when I'm trying to understand this and if I want to, uh, let's say, record or register the response of these four different personality traits. Now I'll take this discussion to a next level wherein I'm saying that I'm meeting four different types of personalities. Let's say either the personalities would be declared personality or we need to find out whether these personalities are declared which we can always find out based on the response that they are giving to the statements i hope you would have understood this either they're declared personalities when i say they're declared that means i know that this fellow is going to be a truth teller this fellow is going to be a liar this fellow is going to be an alternator and this again is an alternator of another variety or it becomes easier for us if if we put if we take them across a process wherein we are trying to register or record their response based on few statements that we would have asked them right now if i if i say this fellow is a truth teller the first statement now what would be his response uh, you know responses to all these statements and statements are never questions for example, I mean, uh, you can say, is it Sunday today? So we are asking a question. The same question can be asked, it is Sunday today. It is. So is it? So statement generally is not interrogative. Non-interrogative sentences which can be answered in terms of yes or no only are statements. Okay. So now if I want to say this fellow is a truth teller and these are six statements so what would be his responses now plus here responds to the correct response 
so now i'm using a prototype for this correct response i'm taking it as plus and incorrect response i'm taking it as minus a liar by default would be antonym to a truth teller so a liar is said to be a liar if he gives an incorrect response to each and every statement or a response that could have been recorded now alternator is is uh, is nothing but a combination of a correct and incorrect response and as of now we are talking about a systematic order so this variety let's say the first response is correct followed by minus followed by plus followed by minus followed by plus followed by minus this is again an alternator belonging to another variety which is he first negates it that means incorrect followed by supports it negates supports negates supports so this is we are talking about the person or the entity who is giving a response on the statements which had to be answered in in terms of yes and no only okay now if i talk about the b category now the b category here is we are talking about unordered response now unordered response can arise only out of an alternate response now this is non alternate response why do i call it as non alternate here every response would be correct here every in case of a liar every response would be incorrect in case of an alternator the word alternate means a correct incorrect correct incorrect or incorrect followed by correct but you have a systematic approach so when it comes to an unordered which is unsystematic response this situation will arise only in case of alternators so let us first talk about alternator 1 what could be so let us say if there are only three statements which he is subjected to how would he respond so one is the response for which he is known for but if i use this response it becomes a systematic response to make it unsystematic this is an alternator who alternates between let's say a correct or an incorrect response but in an unsystematic order similarly this could have been what this could have been also represented as minus plus plus is there any other way in which this thing can be represented so you will see that this entire discussion of binary logic gives a uh, birth to another topic here is which is permutation combination so you know when logic here is combined with permutation combination it becomes a very lethal or sometimes a very very strong experience so i hope you would have understood both the conditions the third and the last thing which i want to discuss in this video is let us say there are two entities let us say entity a and entity b and they now these two entities will be one among these there'll be one among these now when i say one among these generally you would see you will never ever get uh, a question on unordered approach but i discussed this approach is just to enlighten you on this topic or subject generally you will get questions in life or in exams based on a systematic uh, you know assessment of a personality this is a systematic assessment of a personality right okay now now when i say they are two friends now we are talking about two friends as a and b now these a and b definitely would belong to one trait out of these four traits now taking it to a next level i can say that these are nothing but traits only of a people somebody is in a habit of speaking correct and incorrect based on uh i mean based on or based uh, on his discretion or based on the circumstances because sometimes it is said that a lie which is spoken for a cause is spoken for a cause should not be taken as a lie now lie here refers to an incorrect response that would have been given okay so ruling out those cases which become exceptional cases maybe they fall under the ambit of unordered so if i say these are two people either both of them could be truth tellers now if i want to see 
how many cases can be made in terms of the traits of these two personalities so i know that four could have i mean a could have taken any one trait out of these four traits similarly the same thing i can say for b so how many total number of cases can i make now i can make 16 cases now when i'm referring to these 16 cases which cases am i talking about both of them could be truth tellers one of them is a truth teller the other fellow is a liar one of them is a truth teller the other fellow is an alternator of one variety or could be of another variety and then i write down the remaining cases so wherein this fellow liar then truth teller then we are talking about liar again we are talking about alternator then we are talking about the third case wherein alternator one and along with this we could have taken all the four traits now when we are referring to all the four traits we are basically referring to t l a1 and a2 and the last case that i could have made here is for a2 similarly if i would have taken three people three friends so you need to know how to make cases here so in total how many cases would i make we would make 64 cases we may not be writing all the 64 cases but we should know how cases are made and please remember that whether it is an alt if you have to assess a personality you cannot assess by a, a personality uh, in terms of only one statement that you would have recorded you can assess a personality only on the basis of two statements why because for an alternator i mean so there is no difference between alternator 2 or the liar in case if you would have uh you you you're you're trying to assess the personality of an individual based only on one statement and the same thing you can say for a truth teller or an alternator of variety 1 so in order to assess the pers personality of an individual you need to have at least two statements based on which only you can say this person belongs to one trait and that one trait could be either a truth teller i mean one trait could be one among a truth teller or a liar or an alternator of one variety or an alternator of another variety wherein we are talking about ordered approach so we'll do more videos in which we'll be taking examples we'll be solving some puzzles which takes your understanding to a next level wherein you can use all these things uh in daily life in real life as well when it comes to trying to understand the traits of a person or you're trying to assess the 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 psyche of an individual right if you feel that this video was really knowledgeable and it takes your learning to a next level please do not forget to like share and subscribe to our channel if you have already done so click on the bell icon and select all so that you get updates from us regularly if you want us to do videos on some specific topics do not hesitate and put it in the comment section so that we can do it for you thank you so much until next we meet goodbye